oh there's one there we go oh right when i cast is that one bigger it feels bigger oh my goodness oh double jumper how's it going everybody and welcome back to tyler's real fishing i am so excited because the fish are doing exactly what i want them to and they are biting the little bitty hair jig bring it in mr smalley oh you're beautiful you're beautiful oh man oh he's got some battle scars on him look at the battle scars in this fish still beautiful though we love you now i caught this fish on this little tiny hair jig right here what is it and how can you use it effectively to catch bass wherever you live my name is tyler and let's talk about it Well, what's going on everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers with every single video and piece of content that I put out. So if you guys are all about that, all about becoming better anglers, better bass fishermen, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button because you're going to enjoy the heck out of this channel. Now, I'm so excited about today's episode because we get to discuss one of my favorite smallmouth techniques for when they are roaming up shallow and that is the little marabou hair jig. This thing is what I like to lump into the category of do nothing lures. You cast it out there, you bring it back in, and it catches big bass. But before we get into talking about the hair jig, I have to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is AFCO Clothes and a $250 AFCO giveaway we are doing right here on this channel for you guys. I've been wearing AFCO fishing clothes for I think four years at this point. They are some of the most incredible clothes out there, some of the coolest designs and colors, and of course, functional features for us as anglers. This here is the Afco Yuri long sleeve shirt. It is super light, comfortable, comes with a buff built in and a sun protection hoodie built in. I believe the shirt has SPF 30 or SPF 50, so I hardly even wear sunscreen anywhere but my, my legs, which don't have any protection, my hands and my face. This thing is, is such an incredible t-shirt. And not only does AFCO have stuff like this shirt, they have tons of other shirts, short sleeve, long sleeve, rain gear, some of the best and most comfortable and of course protective rain gear out there and some of the dopest hats that I wear in all my videos. Now I've got two pieces of good news for you guys when it comes to AFCO clothes. First of which being, y'all can use the code TRF to save 15% on your order. So if, you, if you're buying 100 bucks worth of clothes, that is $15 that is back in your pocket. But the even better thing, besides the code TRF, which will of course will be linked in the video description below, the better thing is that we are doing a $250 AFCO giveaway. That's enough to outfit your entire body full of AFCO clothes like three times or get an entire rain suit. Now, how do I win this? You ask, Tyler, how do I get to win this $250 giveaway? I'm glad you asked. All you have to do is comment down below a video idea for me to make, as well as your email, Instagram handle, Twitter handle, some way to get a hold of you, preferably email. That way, whenever I pick the winner in a few, hopefully a few days, but it could be a few weeks based on when videos come out, I promise a winner will be announced here on the channel. Myself and AFCO can get a hold of you and, of course, get that prize to you. So, thank you so much to AFCO for sponsoring not just this video or this channel, but my life. I wore AFCO clothes on a daily basis. My wife will tell you I own nothing but AFCO, basically, and a few, you know, nice button downs for church. AFCO makes the best dang fishing clothes and it's not even close. So with AFCO plug out of the way, I say we talk about the Marabou hair jig. When I take this thing out of the package, you may be so confused if you haven't been bass fishing very long or you've never taken a trip up north and you might look at this thing right here and think, what the junk is this thing? Yeah, what the junk is right because looking at it, you're like, it's like a little floofy. It's like something you'd find in your little sister's like, you know, dollhouse like a tiny little furry animal, it's weird. But I can tell you one thing, it catches big bass, especially big smallmouth. Now, I'm gonna link below an entire, I think it was like an hour and a half long seminar, my buddy Ben Nowak, who lives and breathes smallmouth bass, he probably has so much more information than I do, but I took a little bit of my information from his video to kind of teach you guys in a more shorter, cohesive way. So when it comes to the hair jig, I like to talk about what it represents. So what the heck does this represent? Well, when I was first introduced to this lure, it represented a leech, a tiny little, you know, black leech in, in Lake Mille Lacs that swims around in the water literally like this. And so when you have a hair jig, you get it wet, it ends up looking something like that. And so that going through, this is a, t a torn up one. I've caught about 25 or 30 fish on this. A wet hair jig will look like this in the water and of course will look like a leech. But I've traveled all around the country and caught fish in Michigan and Wisconsin and New York and Minnesota not just for leech eaters. I've caught fish that are eating all sorts of things, and I even had a fish a few, a few minutes ago that spit up a shad, but yet ate my hair jig. And so, what the heck does this represent? I don't think for the most part it represents anything but an opportunity. 
bass as a species are opportunistic feeders. And so what that means is that if anything comes into their, their frame of view, they're most likely going to eat it. Sometimes you're gonna have pressured fish that see a lure and don't eat it, but most of the time, if a bass is even close to hungry or agitated and you get your lure near their face, they are going to eat it. And one of the cool things about the hair jig is that it is a slow, presentation. And so especially in clear water where this is designed to be thrown, clear water for me is anything more than five, six foot of water. Ideally, you want crystal clear water for this thing. And a fish can see it from a long ways away. They can use their eyes to hunt it down and come eat this thing. That is where the hair jig excels. This here is the Outcast Tackle Fighter Fly. It is the, uh, the hair jig designed by Bassmaster Elite Series angler Seth Fighter, and he knows a thing or five about catching smallmouth bass, and so I trust his design. This is an incredible jig, and they come in packs of two. My favorite ounce is the 3 32nd ounce. They also come in 16th and 1 8th. I feel like for the most part, the 3 32nds is what most guys out there throw. Now before we go on the front deck to show you guys how to cast and retrieve the hair jig, I gotta talk about what kind of gear is needed for this. And oftentimes I say needed in air quotes because you don't actually need a certain thing to throw a Texas rig, you don't need a certain rod to throw a frog or to skip a dock, you can do with certain other rods. But when it comes to throwing a hair jig, you can't throw it on a bait caster. I don't care if you're talking about those little bait finesse system you know, reels that have super small diameter spools. You cannot throw this on a bait caster. You need a spinning rod to throw a hair jig. And the spinning rod you need is one that is stinking whippy. Now, I'm not talking about whippy at the tip. I'm talking about the entire rod itself has a whole lot of bend to it. As you can see, my, my rod that I have here, which of course I'll have linked in the video description below, it's bending almost all the way back down to where the reel starts. So you want a long, medium light action rod, maybe even lighter than medium light, to be able to whip this thing out there. Because the key, like I said, is super clear water. The fish need to be able to see it, to eat it, but if it's too close to your boat, they're gonna see you and not eat your hair jig. And so what you're gonna have to do is make super long casts and you need, in my opinion, a 7.6 medium light. This here is the Team Lose Custom Pro Speed Stick. The Kevin Van Dam rod is actually a better one, but I'm letting a buddy of mine, Alton Jones Jr., borrow that rod right now to fish the St. Lawrence River for the uh, MLF event. Hopefully he wins the thing. So any 7.6 medium light will work. And of course, I'll have these two rods linked in the video description below. Another important thing is a 10 or 15 pound braided line. Some guys go even, even smaller than 10 or 15, but I love that 15 pound line. I feel like I can still cast it at decent ways, even with 15 pound braid, to an eight pound Seaguar gold label fluorocarbon leader. I just have a whole lot of confidence in gold label. It is very, very thin diameter. Uh, I'd say eight pound gold label is probably the same diameter fluorocarbon as like five or six pound in other brands. It is just so wicked thin and definitely revolutionary for the fluorocarbon world. World. And that is basically all the gear you need, as well as, of course, a spinning reel, either a 200 or two or 2,000 or 3,000 size spinning reel. And of course, I will have all this gear, the CR Smackdown braid, and the uh, the hair jig linked in the video description. And one more thing you can do with this, as I'll show you on my old tattered up hair jig, is to get a little bit more distance on your cast and a little bit more presence, because with it's just the hair uh, uh, moving through the water, it tends to be kind of skinny. And so to kind of bulk out that hair a little bit, I will take a tiny piece of a Cinco or a, a T. TRD little Ned head, not Ned head, Ned plastic right there and thread it onto the hair jig. That way when the hair falls, it kind of pushes it out a little bit more. Sorry, there it is. And, uh, and gives it, like I said, a bigger presence and helps you get further casting distance. But besides that, all you gotta do is cast it out there and wind it back in. So let's go on the front deck, teach you guys how to throw this thing and retrieve it and get ready. Cause we have so many fish catches today. I am excited to show you guys this video. I'll top on the front deck. So how to work the hair jig? That is definitely a question that a lot of people ask when they see this thing in the store is, what the heck is that and how do you work it? Well, it's pretty dang simple. You cast it out there as far as you possibly can, which I talked about needing the long rod and the thin diameter line for. Um, but basically, you're just gonna cast it out there, a nice long whip, let it sink for, I don't know, two or three seconds, and then reel in your slack. And what I do is I kind of keep my rod tip pointed, I don't know, I, like if you're looking at a clock, like a two o'clock position and I just slowly reel back in. And the good thing about the rod that I use for this technique and basically the only rod you, you should use for this technique is that when you're reeling it back in and you kind of give it your, your finger a little push on the rod as you're reeling, it kind of vibrates the entire rod and makes that hair jig pulsate in the water. Now other people of course are gonna argue that you gotta reel it straight in without any sort of vibration to it. Some folks love to uh, just lift it off the bottom, kind of let it glide back down. But what I prefer, what I learned from a, a hair jig expert, in my opinion, my buddy Cole in Canada, 
is that you are supposed to just reel it straight back in very, very slowly because smallmouth oftentimes because they are uh, sight feeders and, and even largemouth in spots in clear water, they are sight feeders. And so they need quite a bit of time to look at it before they eat it. And so by reeling it really slow, straight back to the boat and giving it some vibrations on your rod tip, that bait is gonna pulsate just like a leech or a little bait fish, little minnow, right back to the boat. And that is an enticing way to catch fish. And of course, when you set the hook, it's a very light wire hook. You don't need to jam it on them. You don't need to really set it all that hard. All you gotta do is just kind of lean into those fish and the hook will set itself. Now, when I cast, you might've seen right there, I like to have a little bit longer of line off the tip of my rod just to uh, give me a little bit more momentum when I go back forward. If you have a, I don't know, the normal amount, a foot, foot and a half, you're gonna have problems with casting literally like straight down into the water. So I like to give it like two to three feet long. That way I can do a round cast if I, if I want to or a straight overhead whip like that. And if it's windy, you gotta keep your line straight. So if the wind causes a, a bow in your line, you wanna reel in real quick or as soon as you can to eliminate that bow because it's a very light bite sometimes and you want to be able to, uh, to feel when those fish nab it. Of course, casting downwind is gonna help. Can't always control that, but if you can, try to cast this thing downwind. You'll save that bow in your line and some hassle with wind knots and such, which that braid should you know, take care of. You shouldn't have a whole lot of wind knots, but it's still possible. There we go, boom. And that right there is like a 30, 25, 30 yard cast, which unless you had this gear is virtually impossible. Now let's catch some more. Got him. There we go. Man, little acrobat. Little acrobat over some rocks. You got any buddies with you? No buddies with you, or else I'd throw a drop shot down right to where you are. You're a hard fighter, my friend. Power pull down here. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Good gosh, man. This guy's fighting hard. <laughs> Not even that big, just like two and a half pounds, but not, not anything crazy. Come on, bring it in. Bring it in. And a light line, don't want to boat flip you. And I'll treat you with some dignity. You know what? He's not even that big. I can boat flip him even on even on eight pound. And bring him in. There we go. Wow. For your size, buddy. You did not fight your size. You fought really, really big. But again, that hair jig gets them right in the corner of the mouth. Want to be nice and careful getting them out though because the hook can bend if you jam it too hard. That guy was not getting off though, I tell you. All right, little guy, nothing special, but hey, it's a lot of fun. And these guys are not catchable any way else. They need this little hair jig floated over their faces. Long casts are so crucial. Y'all, I'm seeing every few casts a smallmouth follow my hair jig, but then they get too close and they see the boat. So like, I've got to keep slinging this thing out there, counting it down a few feet and then slowly reel in. I think, there we go, as I told you guys, that's where most of my bites are gonna come, is a little bit farther away from the boat. Oh gosh, big one with him, big one with him. Two, two nice ones, two nice ones. Come on, eat my second rod, eat my second rod. I don't think it's going to, dang it. I see the fish though, fish is right. Ah, dang it, Ned Rig's got gunk on it. Didn't work. <laughs> not a bad little guy, but again, not a giant. Wee, wee, bring it in here. Little Smalley, they're not, I mean, it's technically the St. Lawrence River, but it's not the, the main St. Larry. And so they are not the main St. Larry colors or size. It's kind of interesting. But this hair jig, I mean, this guy was not getting off. I just want to be careful so I don't bend the hook. That's awesome. See you, buddy. And that is three fish so far today, one off camera, that I can add to my tally. 442 for the year. He almost ate it. There's one. <laughs> Little guy. I watched him come eat it. Little teeny guy. He is aggressive. That's the kind you want. Thank you, boy. Oh, I got a power pull down. Thank you, friend. Yep, 
got another one. There we go. Finally. Oh, God. holy smokes. I hope y'all could see that. This dude jumped I like five feet out of the water. He was like eye level. Holy cow. That is nuts. We have found ourselves a little school of fish. And we are just far enough away that they, if, if they know we're here, they're not uh, intimidated at all. Not a big one, but come on, where are the big ones at? I doubt that this, this entire school down here is just small fish. Again, though, look, look where that hook got him. He was not coming off right there. Hook like is it, totally inside his, his lip. So much that you need pliers for some of these. There we go. Thank you, buddy. And click. We're smoking them. We're smoking them. It's a good little hole right here. Got to be fish in it. Yeah, crime. Oh yeah, there they are. Holy crap. Oh, that was a nice one. There's a nice one. Yes. Finally. Finally got me a nicer one. This guy feels and also looks like a St. Lawrence smallmouth. <laughs> this one looks like he's three pounds-ish. And he's got some buddies with him down there. So if they're, uh, if they're in the mood to eat, I'll feed him a Ned Rig. I should have two hair jigs. That's what I should have. Let this guy fight while I catch a buddy on a Ned Rig. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh, uh oh. He's taking me under a little ledge. That's not smart. That's not smart. There we go. Why doesn't his buddy want to play? Oh, dang it. In my efforts to get a second fish, I lost the first. Man, that was dumb. That was so dumb of me. Why'd I do that? He was just, he was, uh, he was dragging me on all kinds of rocks. Don't do that, y'all. That was dumb of me. First three pounder I had and he sneaking got off. That was dumb. Should've just landed that fish. I got greedy. The sin of greed overtook me. There's one. There's one. Yes. Fine. Oh my gosh. That's a bigger one. That's a bigger one. That's a bigger one. Hello, buddy. Hello, buddy. Yep. Yep. Letting him run. Worked my way down the dam here and I, oh, I kept seeing big ones. And you know what? There's more fish with him, but this guy's too big to try to mess with and get a second one. Oh, hello. Oh, there's more big ones in there. Let's go. Oh, I had a four or five along this stretch here chase me and not eat it because they're just that, that finicky right now. Water's that clear. They're smart. Had to get up ahead of them. Oh man, you are strong and big, big and strong. Gosh, this might be a four pounder. Oh gosh, come on. Oh gee, you fight so hard. I know you're not coming off. I just want to make sure my line's good. She is hooked well, I see it. Oh gee, they're so hard to lip. Oh gosh, there we go, yes. Oh man. That right there is a beautiful St. Lawrence smallmouth bass right up against the side of the dam. That is awesome on the little hair jig. That one, he wasn't even hooked inside the mouth. He just swatted at it. I got him in the nose and that hook was so sharp. Actually, you know what? He did eat it. It just, yeah. Oh no, he didn't. That's outside. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful smallmouth bass up against the side of this, uh, this spillway. I don't even know if I'm fishing in legal water, but <laughs> that is stinking awesome. Heck yeah. All right, big girl. This is probably three and a half pounder because you're skinny and post-spawn. Oh, you're doing okay there? You don't even know you're free. Uh-oh. You are tired and stunned, but a few pats of my rod tip and you should be swimming back down with your buddies. We'll keep an eye on her. She'll do okay. Oh, got another one. Got another one. Oh, another big one. That one might be even bigger. And there she goes. Yay. Oh, yeah. Gosh, this school of fish is fired up right now. You know what? I really want to get two on. 
I want to get two on. I know I messed up last time. I know I did. But there are so many fish here right now. It's nuts. Come on. One of them eat it. I need a second hair jig. That's what I need. Okay, never mind. They don't want the Ned Vigor. All they want is the hair jig out of their buddy's mouth. Gee, beautiful, beautiful fish. Come on, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Oh, I would use a net, but it's in that compartment. And what's the fun of that? Oh my gosh, gosh, you are crazy fish, you are crazy. Ah, oh, dang it, I gotta belly him. Uh, belly and you, there we go. All it takes with a small mouth is to get them on the belly and they don't know what to do. That is stinking awesome. That one's a little more chunky right there. I want to weigh this guy, see what he'd go, probably three pounds. But that hair jig got him. Top of the mouth. Beautiful. That fish weighs, oh, I was a little off. 2.91. Almost a three pounder. Still, you know what? Stinking fun to catch fish like this on a hair jig. Love it. Thank you, buddy. There she goes. <laughs> Let's keep catching them, man. There's one. Aha, I knew there'd be one there. <laughs> I think I saw one on live scope and he was the only one that was left. And I was just getting to the edge of where I could catch him. And I did. So there. These guys fight really, really hard. Un even for St. Lawrence smallmouth, unusually hard for their size. Gosh. Hurts my wrist. Just bring it in here, buddy. Just bring it in. Come on. Gee, tighten my drag a little bit. Not let you run. Worse for your line, but gets the fish in faster. There we go. Set him down nicely and grab him on the lip. How hard is that? Not hard. Look at that. Look at the little, look at that little hair jig. Make sure you all are shopping for all your tackle using the links below. They're all affiliate links, which helps me make a living. And of course, prove to my sponsors that I'm a, that I'm a good YouTuber. 4.49. Let's go. Whether you're buying these products or different ones, still click through those links and it tracks your purchase to my account. So if y'all could do that, that would be super cool. Oh. Oh, there's one. He hit it like literally as it hit the water. And I was like, was I on a rock there? No, I was I was on a fish and he came back and got it. Ah, oh, come on. Don't don't you do that. Don't you do that. It's a nice one. And he's got a buddy with him. He's got two buddies. We're gonna keep trying it. If I don't get it here, I'm putting on a second hair jig. Oh, oh no, he ate it. Oh shoot. Come on, come on. Please, oh no, don't get me in those rocks. Don't get me in those rocks. Oh, that's a bad thing, that's a bad thing. He's gonna get me in these rocks. <sighs> well, I had a bite. It's more than I've had previously trying to get two at a time. But I, I do need a second hair jig, so I'm gonna take a second after this fish catching. Whip up, whip up the second one. Whip up another one of these bad boys. Beautiful fish though, man. Gosh, I love these things. They're so gorgeous. So stinking beautiful. The size quality is not here, but the quantity is here. Yes. There's one. Yeah, little, little guy. Wee! Teeny weeny. Yellow polka dot, Smalley. Thank you, friend. Thank you. No, no, no. Chill, chill. I'm just trying to let you go. Thank you. Those little ones, the one that'll mess up your hair jig the worst, though. There's one. Saw him on live scope. Just a little guy, but hey, that was cool. Saw him out there and thought, you know what? That's worth a cast. There's three fish over there. And I got one of them. Probably the smallest of all, of all of them. Stop it. These little ones, man, are so hard to grab. Ouch! Gee. Thank you, buddy. Need to click twice. Boom. We're smoking them. Oh, yeah. There we go. Eight on the fall. Gee. Gee, we got a sideways jumper on our hands. Sideways jumper. Oh, hello. Gosh, man. These fish are insane. Gee. It's like a stinking GT. There's a freshwater GT, I guess. Okay, yeah, have fun. Have a ball. Bring it in here. 
feel like the bigger ones don't even pull as hard. The bigger ones fight for longer, but, well, maybe not. There we go. Still a beautiful fish. Oh my goodness. Huh. Finally got one on the Ned rig. I had like three fish chase my hair jig and they went down to the bottom on live scope. So I was like, oh, I'll give him the Ned rig. And I got him. Yes, sir. Sometimes y'all that side cast, if you get a little wind coming at you, actually gets more distance than an overhead whip. Because overhead whip, you have more uh, slack that's causing your line a bigger bow in the air, which is just more wind resistance. So that's why y'all see me do a sideways cast a lot with a crankbait and a jerkbait because it eliminates all that extra drag in the air to let your lures fly further. You gotta be more direct with it, more accurate, but it can actually get you longer cast if you do. Oh gosh, that was so cool. If you do an underhanded roll cast, I'll watch that guy. <laughs> I was like, you're gonna eat it, you're gonna eat it, you're gonna eat it, and he did. And he, did. oh, hello. Hello, there we go. All right. I'm gonna do a, a video on how to boat flip a fish at some point because y'all are probably seeing me do this and you know noticing the fluidity of of the flip and the lack of rod and line breakage there's a, a little technique that goes with it that i will definitely make a video on at some point but for now let's keep catching fish i knew it oh my goodness what a jump all he needed it was from a different angle. Different angle, boy. I'll give it to you from a different angle. Don't you worry about that. I'm not. Uh, I'm not against flipping around for you. Yes. That's a key sometimes with a lot of fish, not just smallies. Oh, look at that. Is that they might not want it from one angle. It could be from one side of the dock to the other. Or it could be from a brush pile or a grass line. Sometimes there are fish there just like this, two casts in a row. But the fish just want to present it from a different way. Don't know why, that's just how they be. Fish are weird, but I love them. I finally got one. <laughs> one of the smallies that was cruising up there, but I, it's like I don't even care about the smallies right now. All I want is these walleye. They look huge. I think they're all gone. They were like sucked to the bottom, not even moving. I want to catch one of them. Who cares about these smallies? Come on, get in here. Yeah, you fight so hard. You weigh like a pound and a half. Gosh. Fight so hard for your size. It's crazy. Ah, get in here. Gosh. Beautiful fish. I love you, but. You're distracting me from checking out what these other fish are. There we go. We buy, we guy. There's one. Oh, that was a cool bite. It was like a thunk thunk. Wow. Wow, what a jump. Oh, part of me hates when they jump and part of me just absolutely loves it. That is so much fun. That is a ton of fun, y'all. And I used to have more drag with these fish, but this eight pound line is really holding up. So not gonna give them a whole lot of drag. Just gonna horse them in. Come on. That's the advantage of the long rod. Like I said, it really absorbs a lot of the pull from these fish. That's a beautiful one, man. Ugh. Look at the hair jig eating fool. Got him the roof of the mouth. Thank you, buddy. I don't even know how many we've caught today, but I'm at 4.59, so I don't know where I'm at. Maybe 20, 15, 20. A good day for sure. There's one. Eat it, eat it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, watched him. So cool, man. I was like, eat it, buddy. Don't be shy. Do your thing. Yeah, gosh. Power pulled down. Switch hands, give them the old, oh, well, not quite ready yet. Give them the old flip. And I've got a lot of fish on one hair jig. They don't all last this long. The hair gets all torn up, but there we go. Oh, popped out. <laughs> Click. Yeah. 
there's one. Gosh, it is on the fall. That one, uh, I can't tell if it's bigger or not, but it's jumping like a madman. And now you're gonna be where you should be, in my boat. In my boat. Thank you, friend. Mr. Plunk. Y'all, there are so many smallies here. There's one. Ha ha ha. And now that I got one, are there any others that are getting agitated? Nope, not quite. Usually when one's hooked, a lot of the others are hooked, but, or want to be hooked. I see a bigger smallie right here though, while I got this guy going. I'd love to get this one. Ah, they're smart. They are smart. Let's get this guy in. Chee Oh, look what he spit up. Look what he just spit up. A, uh, some kind of shrimp, no, it's a fish. Some kind of beach fish. I know what you're eating, buddy. And it's not black, so I don't know what you're doing eating my <laughs> black hair jig. Y'all, there are so many smallmouth in here. It's crazy. Oh, God, and that was cool. Watched him, too. This is a brown one, but it's a very light brown. Super light brown bass. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching this episode of TRF. It is my pleasure to teach you guys how to fish. Oh, how to fish the uh, little tiny hair jig. Again, like I mentioned, as always, all the gear that I'm using, rod, reel, line, lures, is linked in the video description. Please shop for your tackle down there. If you became a better bass angler today, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you all next time right here on TRF. See ya.